Okay, welcome back to Gary's Economics. Today, we are gonna talk about the changing shape of Great Britain. I've come down to Waterlooville because I'm helping my mum and dad out with an eye test, but bloody hell. Like, this is definitely not what it was. I grew up around here. I used to sit on that cannon as a kid. And I think a lot of these shops, like, I remember I used to come and get my Pepe jeans from one of these shops, but look at it. It's bloody nothing here. It's crazy. All right, I want to talk about this, um, this phenomenon of the death of the smaller town. Um, I've been thinking about this for a long time. So a couple of years ago, in the winter, I went to Colombia for two months because uh, I wanted to practice my Spanish and because I hate winter. Um, so Colombia is a massive country. It's about, I think it's like five or six times bigger than the UK. It might even be more. And population is a lot less than the UK. So it's just over half the UK. So it's a big, low population density, density country. It's a much poorer country than the UK. So I was expecting it to be, you know, quite rural, right? There's a lot of space, there's a lot of farmland, there's not that many people. I thought it would be like spread out. Um, you know, it's a poor country, so there might be a lot of people like working in agriculture. But I got there, I flew into Bogota, and straight away Bogota is like a massive city. Bogota is like, you know, it's almost as big as London. It, it might even be as big as London. And I was quite surprised, right, because you have a, much fewer people in the country, but they've got a massive city the size of London. And then after that, I took a bus to Medellin, which is the second biggest city. And then again, you have another city, which is almost as big as London. So I was kind of like a little bit blown away by this. Like, how can this country, massive country with like relatively small population, have two cities the size of London? And it got me thinking about this quite a lot. And then the more I travelled in Latin America and in other countries as well, I started to realise that actually... This is quite commonly the shape of like a relatively well-developed but very unequal country, which is that you have a huge amount of farmland, but it's largely industrialised and not many people live in that farmland. And all of the people then basically, they have no jobs and they need jobs. So they have to swarm basically to where the rich people are because the rich people have all the money. And you end up with these sort of huge super cities with, with a very, very wealthy centre and kind of large area of, of essentially very low quality housing. You could call it slum around these, these big cities. And this is not, not all unique to Colombia. This is the situation in most poor, most more unequal countries in the world. And um, it basically got me thinking about what, what the shape of a country is. So I think in capitalism... Your country has to, the physical shape of your country has to reflect the wealth distribution of your country. And if you look at Western European countries, they have a different shape, which is they have some big cities, some smaller cities, and they have some towns, and they have some people who live in, in rural settings. It's much more diverse than these extremely unequal countries where increasingly the people live in these slums around super cities. And if you think about it, this makes sense, right? Because if you have a relatively equal economy, then every person in that economy is a small-scale wealth holder, they are a worker, and they're also a consumer. And what that means is, basically any, any size settlement is, is sustainable, because as long as you have a group of people there, you have wealth holders, you have consumers, and you have workers. And everybody can work for each other, and everybody can consume each other's work. So, you know, small cities are sustainable, towns are sustainable, villages are sustainable, because everybody can work for each other. But once you have a very unequal society, then what you have is basically two kinds of people. You have a very large group of very poor people who need to work, and you have a very small group of extremely wealthy people who have an enormous amount of money to spend. And what that means then is if you have a group, a village, which doesn't include any rich people, you have a ton of workers and you have no employer, you have no consumer. So these small cities basically become they basically become non-viable, non-sustainable, and these cities have, have to essentially disband, and the people need to move towards, not even necessarily the big cities, but wherever rich people exist. And I think what we have in this country, the UK, and you also see it in the US, in places like the Rust Belt, and, in, and actually in a lot of Europe, 
I think what you have is transitional countries in the sense that we used to be a country with a relatively large property owning middle class. So these people lived in a variety of different cities, big cities, small cities, towns, and these places were sustaining. But now we have moved and we are continually moving into this more Colombia type model. You know, it's common across Latin America, including in the poor countries in Asia, maybe some Eastern European countries. We're moving to that very unequal model where people need to live where the rich people live. So they need to move. They need to move to these, these super cities. And you're seeing that, you're seeing the world basically split into two kinds of places, right? Places where there are no rich people and places where there are rich people. And I think this is often described by economists in a way which I think is incorrect as an increasing, such a classic economist way to describe a problem, increasing preference towards large cities. They say, well, people just like large cities now. So everybody's moving to large cities. But I think this doesn't really fit the model, right? Because if you look at a place like Newcastle, Newcastle is a large city. Glasgow is a large city. These are cities where there's increasing economic deprivation and people are leaving. Whereas if you look at a place like Cambridge or Oxford, these are small cities and yet these are places where people are moving to the cities and where housing is extraordinarily expensive. If you look at, for example, the Swiss Alps or you know, the Hamptons, popular holiday destination in the States for wealthy people, these are not big cities and yet they're becoming very expensive. So actually what you're seeing is people flooding from the country to wherever rich people are. And, and that is what, what, ha what you have to do when countries become more unequal. I think we are moving from the physical shape of an equal country to the physical shape of, of an unequal country. And you also see that in, in big cities. So I'm from London, I come from Ilford in East London. And um, you know, this is a place where people are swarming to this place. And one of the most common solutions that is put forward to the housing crisis is you have to build more houses, you have to build more houses. And um, I'm from, from Ilford and people from other sort of more distant suburbs, poorer suburbs of London, will be very aware that in these places, enormous amounts of housing is being built. And if you go to the street I grew up on, the density has increased enormously. All of the houses have been expanded upwards. All of the houses have been expanded backwards. There was a factory in the street which has been knocked down and replaced with a massive block of flats. And these, these are providing extremely low quality housing because these cities are increasingly full of extremely poor people. And I think, I'm not opposed to building more houses, but I think unequal economies, the shape of these countries is basically enormous slums around wealthy centers. And that, because our economy is becoming a very unequal economy, that is what our country wants to become like from a capitalist perspective. So if we build more houses under this situation of high and growing inequality, we will build that physical slum space. You know, if you go back to Ilford, especially the part of Ilford I'm from, that is what it's becoming. So I think when I see this video, what I see is a transitional country. You know, we used to be a middle class country and we are becoming a very highly unequal country. And highly unequal countries don't have cute little towns for ordinary people. They have slums for ordinary people. And if you go to, you know, if you go to highly unequal countries like most of the countries in Latin America, you know, you go to Mexico City, you'll see the same thing. People are forced out of the countryside. The countryside gets, you know, industrialized from a farming perspective. Some of it gets kept as, you know, playgrounds for the rich. And people swarm to the big cities. And um, I'm very skeptical that, that that building will solve the problem. You know, I, I lived in Tokyo for two years and, um, that is a city with 38 million people and very unaffordable housing. Um, I think poverty is the problem. You know, if you, if you, if you don't get money in, in ordinary people's pockets, then everybody has to live close to the rich people. And there are fewer and fewer rich people and those people are richer and richer. So I think unless you fix the wealth distribution, then this video of uh, emptying out small towns is, is the future of, of this country, but not just this country, but also America and also, also most of Europe. And um, I don't want it to go that way. Um, and one solution is we, we, we build more housing in London and we turn London into the, the super slum it's becoming. And another solution is we get money in people's pockets and allow people to live where their families have lived in hundred, for hundreds of years because, because they can afford to work for each other. And um, that's the future which, which I'd rather have for, for this country, for, the Ameri for America and for the rest of Europe. And um, we can do it, but we only, can only do it if we deal with inequality. And the only way, the only way to deal with inequality 
is to tax the rich. So um, we're going to campaign for it here every week. Thank you for your support.